this is week 10 in Ready to Homeschool six month countdown. You can download this on my blog, hilarioushomeschooling.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about outlets for energy, service, and mission. Now, I know you don't think that you have extra energy right now, but your kids will when you are homeschooling. You are going to be in the house a lot, which is good. Remember we talked about you need to stay home and practice staying home so that you can get done what you need to get done. But this is one time where you do need to leave the house. You need to go somewhere. First of all, possibly to develop your kids' interests. Second, it might be a service project or community service that you can do with your children. And third, you may actually be called by God to go on a missions project, a missions trip somewhere far away. For a short term, a long time, it, I don't know. I'm just saying that we are going to talk today about what that looks like when you're homeschooling, um, how to put things together and make sure that your kids are seeing you in action um, serving other people. So <clears throat> one of the reasons that I think um, we're not as efficient with our time as we need to be and we talked about time management a few weeks ago. But I think it's because um, the way that life is in America, in a first world country, we have, you know, the dishwasher and the, the washing machine and the dryer and um, computers. And our lives have gotten way more automated than they were for our great grandparents. And so it doesn't take us all day to do the work that's necessary for survival. We have a little bit of extra free time. So that is one reason that a lot of moms are able to homeschool is because their time to actually run a family has decreased or can be decreased. Um, if we're not careful with our time, we can let all of those tasks still fill them up. And then we take time to, you know, relax, which for me is scrolling on Facebook. And then that gets to be a waste of time. So what I want to challenge you to do instead is to think about what your priorities are for when you do go out of the house, when you do have extra energy or extra time because you have been so efficient at running your home. What else could you do on top of what you're already doing when you get to be homeschooling and, and you still have a little bit extra time? You actually may not have a lot of extra time, but your kids might um, because they're not always doing all of the chores that you're doing or all of the thinking power that you're doing to what it takes to run a whole family, but you need to plan ahead for what you want your kids to be involved in um, on top of their usual academics. So for some people that's church and there's uh, church activities for every age, but there could also be other things that are worth your kid's time. You want to be careful not to do it all because you could sign your kids up for something on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you're always out of the house. Now that gets back to choking out all of the good stuff, the best stuff that we wanted to stay at home to accomplish. So you can't necessarily run around all the time, then you're car schooling. And believe me, that is not as helpful or effective for your kids as leisurely time at home. Okay, so when your kids need to get the wiggles out, plan ahead for something that they can do. Uh, we've talked before about field trips and, you know, trips to the park and stuff like that. But what about helping them develop their interest? Um, for some families, that's gymnastics or dance or taekwondo. And those happen on a weekly predictable schedule that you can plan into your day. Um, sometimes it's just a hobby that your kid really enjoys and you can find a way to incorporate going to a meeting about that hobby. For example, coin collecting or RC cars. Um, there's a lot of different places that you can take your kids. There's archaeology clubs. Some of them are geared toward adults, but I have found that a lot of times adults are so thankful that kids are interested in what their hobbies are that they willingly invite kids to come to their meetings and kind of take them under their wing and mentor them, which is an amazing thing that you can find. Um, if you find a trustworthy group that you believe your kid could spend some extra time with. Their interest will really blossom in that situation. So you need to look at what your family's already committed to and what makes sense to add in at this time. If you can fit in soccer for, you know, a short six to eight week season, uh, go for it. Um, 
But one of the reasons that we are finite as creatures, as human beings, is because if we thought we had all the time in the world, we would try to do everything. We would try to do it all and have it all. I think that God was very wise to give us limits, to say 24 hours in a day. Because if you have limits, then you have to choose what's most important. And in choosing what's most important, it reveals what's true about your heart. Um, and this is true for kids, but they don't necessarily see the wisdom in it like adults do. So pray about the opportunities that are in front of you. And look around in your community for something that fits the interest um, or the activity level of your kids. And not every kid has to do everything. We just talked about that. There's classes, there's workshops, there's field trips, there's sports. Sometimes they're free, offered at the library. Um, try to think about what fits your worldview when you're signing up your kid for something that they can participate in. Because sometimes you can find something that's free, but then it clashes with your world worldview and you end up realizing that it was not a good fit for your kid or your family at this time. <clears throat> okay, so that's developing interests and hobbies. For ministry and service projects, I just want to talk a few minutes about the value of your kids seeing you in action in ministry. Um, we want our kids to grow up servant-hearted. We want them to see the needs of others and care about others and do something about it. And sometimes they're not going to naturally do that. In fact, probably hardly ever. Although some kids just seem to be born with a heart of compassion that they really do care about others and want to do something about it. Other kids, um, they're kind of selfish. And if it doesn't really fit with their own personal needs at the moment, they don't care. So one of the things you want to do as a parent is find some different ways that you can get involved in a service project in your community or your church that your kids can come along with you and help you with it. Um, now, it's, it's great to do something on your own as well, and that's a needed outlet for moms and dads both. But your kids aren't necessarily seeing you being a servant in action if they're not with you. And that's why some of the things that I've listed here um, actually allow you to model your servant heart uh, assuming that you are developing your own servant heart, but that your children are able to see that model in front of them while you serve together. So going to the nursing home is one way. Um, having children come into your home, child care, and not just for a job, just, you know, if a mom needs a break and you're able to give her a couple hours um, of your time and you and your kids together entertain her kids. Um, community dinners or food distribution, um, in our community, we have a community food basket that once a month goes around to different towns and the kids help load up um, people's cars with food from the food basket. Meals on Wheels can be a fun way to help in your neighborhood if that's a service that's offered. Dog sitting is something that kids can do and oftentimes they're very good at it and that's a good way to um, interact with other people and, and help. Uh, sometimes in the fall, you could rake leaves for your neighbors or someone who is too old to get out of their house and do it themselves, but you and your family could do that for an afternoon for them. And then, of course, in the, in the winter, there's plenty of snow to scoop for neighbors. Um, I wanted to say something about the nursing home visits. There was a time when our church would go and have... Uh, nursing home afternoons where they would serve a snack and then they would have a special program. And they often asked our family to do it because since we're homeschooled, we're available in the middle of the day. And um, we said yes as many times as we could. And I'm so glad we did because I look back on that now and I see the opportunities that my kids, my oldest, my oldest kids had to interact in the nursing home. And now um, my oldest son <clears throat> leads Sometimes he leads the singing and the worship at his church. And I think back to the times when he did that at the nursing home as a 12 or 13 year old. And my daughter is um, has done a service ministry in, during college in a nursing home where they interact with the residents and do craft projects with them. And she really did a great job of interacting with the residents even at age five or six or seven. She learned how to sit down and talk to them and have a conversation and not be afraid of people in the nursing home and their different disabilities. So 
I look back at the time, I didn't realize it when we were going, but just being there and showing the kids how to in, interact with the elderly at that time opened other doors for both of them down the road. Um, and, and it's kind of like that. You're not really sure what the service project that you're working on right now, how that equips your child for something that they might do later in life. But if God's calling you to it, he's got a plan and he's got a way that he's building that into your kids without you even having to be purposeful or intentional about it. Uh, I wanted to highlight Raymond and Dorothy Moore. They are homeschool pioneers from, you know, 50 years ago. Um, they have something that they call a homeschool formula, and I've put the link to it on the, on the notes. They said that every student should be involved in study, work that involves pay, and service, so like community service projects. And that, that was a huge, I mean, a third part of their education. So not just something that they tack on every, you know, once a month or something like that, but actually a main ministry service project that that student takes on. And that was part of their homeschooling formula. So I wanted to make sure I put the link there so you could read more about that if you are interested. Um, if you have regular opportunities for ministry, then you could work that into a weekly routine. Like, you know, knowing that every Thursday you're going to be out of the house or something like that. Um, the unusual opportunities, like what I was saying at the nursing home for our family, it didn't really fit in with a weekly schedule. But as many times as we were available, we tried to say yes. Now, of course, you can't say yes to everything. So you really need to think about um, and discern what is best for your family and how that, how your kids would be able to see you um, modeling a servant heart. And, and if they would be in the same room with you or if they'd be separated from you. And sometimes you really just can't handle the details of a service project and the details of young children, many young children. It just turns into uh, chaos. So wisely think about what you're able to commit to and then bring your kids along and find ways for them to help. Don't just let them sit in a corner and watch while you do all the work. Think about what is an age appropriate task that you could give to them. When we visited the nursing home, I wanted them to interact with the residents, but I knew that they would rather not. So we would hand out um, worksheets that they had done for handwriting practice because they usually had to do a special one every Friday and color it. So we would walk around handing out their extras. And then I would also just buy each one of them like a sticker sheet or two. And they would go around asking the residents if they'd like a sticker. And of course the residents just loved it when the kids came to talk to them. So most of them said yes. And, um, and they would also pass out the napkins to the residents for the treats. Um, and then usually they would sing a song or two or recite a poem. Uh, it's a non-threatening audience. Um, when you have a lot of older people staring at you, it can be intimidating, but generally they're very loving and kind. So just think through ahead of time what the tasks are that they could help with and then get them involved and see how it goes. The last one on there is missions. Um, God calls us to go. Matthew 28 says that. Matthew 28, 19 and 20, right before Jesus um, dismissed his disciples and went back up into heaven, he said, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Now, to a very real degree, you are already doing that by homeschooling and shepherding your own children. You are making disciples, and so don't ever feel like you have to um, prove to God that you're going to do something more for him. You already are. But if God is calling your family to go overseas or to go to an inner city situation or some community somewhere else, and bring the gospel to a new group of people. Don't live in fear. You can take homeschooling with you. Your kids will see um, a new side of you. They will learn in a whole different culture. And those are things that um, there are solutions to. So it could be that you're going to end up on mission. And then all of this is going to be, um, you know, you're going to be doing missions and service so much time that you'll have to squeeze in homeschool somewhere along the way. So don't be afraid of it if that's what God's asking you to do. Um, 
lead your family. It would be life-changing to be able to, to show your kids what it looks like to obey God's call to go somewhere else and bring the gospel to people who don't have it. That would be amazing. Uh, even if you can't go yourself, think about ways that you could support people who have gone, whether they have kids or don't have kids. Think about how you could encourage them. Maybe you can support them with finance, financially and the kids could help, you know, with an offering that they themselves are involved in. Um, you could pray for them every morning. You can talk about the country that they're from. You can write them emails or letters, um, point out, you know, the, the nation's flag, current events, um, ask for updates from the missionaries. Just knowing that your kids and your family are supporting them and praying for them and remembering them while they're out of sight um, is a big encouragement too. Also, if they happen to come home on furlough or through your area for a visit, ask them to come stay with your family or have them for a meal or ask what you can buy or donate for that time. Um, that is one way that your kids will have a global perspective on the whole entire world is if they get to meet a missionary, talk to them about the country that they're from and hear more about what God's doing on another part of the earth. Um, that is an amazing experience in itself. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do, I wanted to read to you two more verses, uh, Matthew 20, uh, verses 20 through 28. Jesus said to them, you will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my father. That was because, um, the mother of James and John had come to Jesus asking if her sons could sit next to him in heaven and help rule. When the 10 other disciples heard about this, they were indignant with the two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them, but not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Lord Jesus modeled servant leadership to his disciples. He involved them and took them on, you know, little outings where they met with people who had great needs. And then the disciples were able to watch as Jesus met those needs and cared for people. So this is one way that Jesus discipled um, his followers, and one way that you can disciple your own children is to take them out with you on mission, on service projects. And remember that if you want to be great, you learn to be a servant. This is something that doesn't make sense to kids, um, and it doesn't often make sense in our own culture either. But, but Jesus is asking us to do that, to become servant leaders. It was um, very similar in Mark 9, where he says the same, almost the same thing. Mark 9, 35, sitting down, Jesus called the 12 and said, if anyone wants to be first, he must be the very last and the servant of all. So just a reminder that if you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be the servant of all and take your kids with you. Um, week 14, we are discussing Wisdom's Way of Learning. It's an ebook, and I've got the link at the bottom of this page. And then you will notice one other handout ready to go now. Um, it's right underneath on my blog. It's right underneath week 10. It is called homeschool resource list with links. Yes, you are finally ready to research different companies and different curriculums, um, for academics. Okay. I know you feel like it's all been a long time coming. We're a third of our way through. We're more than a third of the way through our six month countdown. And you're wondering why we can't talk about academics yet. Okay, next week we're starting with reading. So I wanted you to have all of this. It's a lot and you don't need to do it all right now, but there are links that go along with um, several different curriculum companies that I have used and that I can recommend. The one for reading and language arts is on the fourth page. So you don't have to go in order. You can skip around, you can follow links. This is for you to print out and take notes on and see what fits your family style what fits your philosophies. But next week, we're going to be going over the some of 
the theories in teaching reading, and then also some of the materials and resources that you can use in teaching reading. So I wanted you to have this a week early so that you could familiarize yourself with some of these things um, before we get to week 11. So um, go ahead and download that, um, print it out, follow some links, start learning some of the different resources that are out there in the world to help you on this homeschooling journey. And um, I think that's it for this week. I hope you have a great day. Thanks, everybody.